Okay. Uh, coming to us from the Hartree Center just outside Manchester yep. uh, in UK, um, Alex Grant talking about high order FEM. Yes. Thank you for coming. Hi. Um, so, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Alex Grant. Um, and I'm going to talk about high order FEM in AMREX. Um, <clears throat> so, you'll notice uh, Karthik Chocolingham um, is the name at the, the front of the list. Um, he's the one that's done the vast majority of the work with just a few small contributions um, from uh, the rest of the team. Um, unfortunately, he can't be here today, um, so I'll try and give you a, a good overview of, of the work, um, but unfortunately I'm not quite as familiar with all of the technical details as, as Karthik is. Um, so I'm going to uh, give a quick introduction uh, to AMREX, if you've not come across it before, um, talk about uh, what our motivation for putting FEM in AMREX is, um, and how we use the AMREX data structures uh, to, to do that. Um, I'm then going to talk about the implementation, implementation itself, uh, and I'm going to sort of go through in the order in which uh, we did it, because I think that makes the, the most sense and it's a nice way to introduce all the different concepts. Um, so starting with the, the simplest Poisson problem. Um, I'm then going to talk about what we're working on right now, uh, which is uh, um, time-dependent problems. Uh, and then I'm going to finish um, with sort of some of the challenges we've faced and uh, what we're looking to Im implement next. Uh, so AMREX, uh, it's a uh, ECP developed uh, C++ uh, software framework uh, to support the development of block structured adaptive mesh refinement applications. Um, so what you have is you have um, multiple different levels um, with increasing spatial and usually um, temporal uh, refinement as well. Uh, and importantly, each of those levels is solved uh, independently from one another. Um, the other thing as well is that the higher levels uh, sit on top of um, the lower levels, so they're sort of overlaid on top of the, the solutions there. Uh, and then each level uh, is composed of a, a, a set of um, uniform cells that are grouped into uh, boxes. So you have the base level which is fixed and uh, always covers the entire domain and then the, the higher levels uh, change adaptively uh, with the simulation. Um, so the reason we're um, interested in uh, using FEM in AMREX, um, well AMREX is quite a nice toolkit, it's got a lot of uh, things in there but uh, we don't think anyone's done a, an implementation of FEM in there before, so that's something that adds to, to what AMREX can do. Um, we're also interested in, in looking at the, the performance benefits um, from using a, a, a regular block structured uh, mesh when we're comparing it to uh, unstructured grids. Um, and uh, the Hartree Centre has a, a big collaboration uh, with the United Kingdom Atomic Energy uh, Authority. Um, working together with them on fusion research, and they've funded uh, most of this work. Uh, and one of the things they're doing is they're developing a high-order um, FEM particle in cell uh, code uh, to simulate plasma edge physics. Um, but one of the issues they're having with that is they're finding it very difficult um, to keep track of uh, the particles on, on an unstructured grid. Um, so if we're using a structured grid, uh, that that becomes very easy and the problem goes away. Um, so uh, another reason for using AMREX for this is AMREX um, has some capability of, of using embedded boundaries um, so that we can still support uh, complex geometries even on a, a, a block structured mesh. Um, and we've got a little uh, uh, graphic there. Um, that's not from our FEM implementation, that's a, a separate thing. Uh, but that does show that, that AMREX can have some support for um, fusion relevant geometry uh, there. Um, so yeah, the AMREX data structures, uh, they come in two forms. Um, they deal with uh, cell strength data or nodal data. Uh, and again, these are all split up into boxes, which are the, the red uh, outline there. Um, so um, whether you're using a cell or a node, Because it's block structured um, and because it's a regular grid, um, every 
every cell, every node, uh, has a unique index in each coordinate direction, um, and that's because it's regular, that's, that locates uh, all of those nodes um, in space. Um, and uh, the boxes themselves that, that AMREX uh, are built on, um, they're defined by the, the low node or the low cell to the high node or the, the high cell. Um, and uh, what we do in, in our FEM implementation is um, we use the, the cell-centered data structure to uh, represent our elements as sort of our control, and then uh, we use the nodal data structure um, for our, our nodes um, to, to store the data for that, um, and, and when we do um, our interpolation between the levels and, and uh, our indexing. Um, so that doesn't necessarily lend itself to higher orders. Um, so what we do is um, we map internally our um, cell center data, which represents our elements, um, to uh, a set of nodal values. That's quite easy and straightforward um, for first order. Um, for, for second order, higher order, um, we simply uh, refine our, our box, um, which is something Amrex can, can do for us very easily. Um, but it's not something it keeps track of. That's our implementation knows about that, and we have to do it. Amrex doesn't know anything about that. Um, so that that provides a place for us to store the data, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the, those locations um, within that uh, are particularly meaningful. But again, as long as our implementation knows that, that's fine. Um, yeah. So what we do is our, on our uh, cell-centered data structure where we um, us have our sort of control structure. Um, we go through element by element, uh, and then on our nodal data structure, um, we go um, through all of the, the different nodes, the different degrees of freedom, uh, to go through and uh, assemble our matrices, force vectors there. Um, so moving on to the implementation, um, we started out with a simple Poisson problem. Um, so apologies, um, that, that should read, um, it should be an, an x there in, in the first equation rather than two y's, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we're starting out with a simplest possible Poisson problem, um, a homogeneous boundary condition um, zero at all the edges, we have also implemented uh, non-homogeneous boundary conditions. Um, and we, uh, we are doing um, a coordinate transformation. Um, the, the picture here isn't obviously very exact because it's um, we're using uh, regular block structured grids. Um, but the advantage of that is that um, because it's a uniform grid, um, it, we only have to do this once per level. It's, it's going to be different at the higher levels. If I try one quick fix of the audio, yeah. I think we're getting a little bit of feedback. And if I cut off the sound going from here out to Can test test I think that's Is that a better? better okay uh, yeah so uh, the, the block structure did um, simplifies that um, yes um, so we started out um, just using first order elements uh, without any refinement, um, just as a quick test. And uh, Karthik was able to impl implement that quite quickly. Um, and when we compared the outputs to uh, MFEM, um, we, we found that we were in fact getting the correct result. Um, so that's not particularly interesting um, because it's quite, quite easy to do. Um, we know the number of nodes, we've not got any refinement. Um, so we need sort of a different strategy um, when we're dealing with uh, the multiple levels which we have to solve independently. Um, so just before I talk about that, um, just a quick uh, note about the, the performance um, on this simple case. Um, we also looked at the performance compared to MFEM, um, only on a small, 
only on a small system. Um, but we did find uh, that th there was some performance benefits there, which we, we would expect. Um, and in fact, we found that uh, our implementation uh, was up to 37% faster than MFM. Um, and that, that is, I, d I don't know the breakdown, uh, but that's the solve and the setup time um, included in that. Um, so, in terms of how we deal with having to have these multiple levels which we're solving uh, independently, um, we're using um, the principle of superposition, which is um, it's used inside FEM already um, in, in when you're doing fracture mechanics. Um, you can see up in the top we've got a, an illustration of, of that, uh, where you um, use a, a step function superimposed on your solution to, to model the fracture. Uh, so we're sort of stealing that idea um, to, to use to decompose uh, our solve uh, level by level. Um, so we can see a, a simple 1D case uh, down at the bottom uh, where we solve for the solution on the, the base mesh. Uh, and then on the higher levels, um, we're effectively trying to uh, solve for the difference, for the, the physics that we weren't able to capture on the base level um, because the, the refinement wasn't, um, was too coarse. Um, so we're not interested in the solutions at the nodes where uh, they match with the lower level because we've already solved those. Um, so we constrain those to zero uh, and then we solve uh, the intermediate nodes. Um, uh, and then we add them together to get the final solution. Um, so one of the nice things about that, um, because all you, need, all you do is you constrain the nodes, you don't need to worry about hanging nodes at all. Um, so if we just go through our simple Poisson problem now with uh, an extra level in a worked example. Uh, so firstly, where our master grid is this uh, cell-centered data that, that AMREX sort of defaults to. Uh, we start by converting that to, to a nodal grid, just first order here. Uh, we solve our Poisson problem uh, on this nodal grid. And then um, because it's adaptive mesh refinement, in theory we would be uh, looking at the errors and then deciding where we needed to uh, adapt. For this simple case, um, we're just specifying that we're refining in the center. Um, but we would be refining based on the uh, element rather than the nodes. So we start out with a higher level cell centered and again convert it to nodal. Um, we then inactivate all the uh, nodes where we are sitting on top of an existing node and also around the boundary. Uh, we then solve at that higher level. Uh, now because we're sort of solving from the differences and we've got most of uh, the, the solution already at the lower level, you can see it's uh, sort of a lot less energy in that result. Um, and then we need to, to add our solutions together. Um, now, because the lower level grid is fixed and regular, um, we can't do anything about sort of uh, pushing the result down to that base grid. So instead, we interpolate the result on the base grid up to our higher level. And uh, then we add those two solutions together for the final result on our higher level. Um, so in terms of how we actually implement this, um, so we're using the sort of unique uh, AMREX ID that covers, always covers the entire domain at whatever level you're on. Um, now, because at higher levels you're not going to be covering your whole domain, um, that would mean that we potentially would be assigning way too much memory. Um, so the way we're currently getting around this is um, we do assign some memory for all of the potential nodes at, at all levels. Um, but we start by assuming that absolutely everything, uh, at all of the nodes are inactive, so we're only assigning a single memory entry of zero for all of the nodes. And then where we do have the active nodes, when we go through our boxes uh, inside AMREX, we reallocate the memory um, just for the active elements, 
um, and then we go through and uh, assemble the matrix. You, we're, and we're using a MAT MPA AIJ for that. Uh, and then when it comes to the solve, um, we use the redistribute preconditioner um, to remove all those uh, null elements that we set up at the start. So uh, that's our um, multi-level strategy. Um, for higher orders, um, we're using something called the integrated Legendre polynomials. Um, now that might sound familiar um, to you uh, if you've come across spectral elements as they use uh, Legendre polynomials. Uh, we're using the integrated Legendre polynomials and the reason for that is that um, the integrated polynomials uh, are hierarchical, hierarchical elements, um, have hierarchical basis functions, which allows us to do this uh, sort of multi-level superpositioning, stacking levels on top of each other. Um, so with these, um, instead of sort of the, the actual nodes within the cell, um, we have uh, edge modes and face modes instead. Um, to, to give us our higher order. Uh, so we have implemented that for the simple Poisson problem. Um, and yes, again, verified um, that we, we get the correct results and we don't uh, bl blow it up and, and go all wrong. Um, and uh, we've also got a, a slightly maybe clearer diagram of, of those different um, edge modes and face modes and, and how they combine to, to give you the solution. Um, so if you think back to the um, picture of our nodal data, um, those edge modes and face modes don't correspond particularly to the, the nodes that we're storing those values on, but that, that's okay. Um, again, we, we're just using that as somewhere to store data. Um, so Moving on from the um, Poisson problem, um, we wanted something a bit more interesting um, to, to start with our looking at our time-dependent problems. Um, so we started out with the, the heat equation. Um, so we, we added a time step um, using the, the backward Euler, Euler formulation. Um, so um, we've only looked at the uh, refined levels and the higher order problems with the Poisson. Um, for these problems, we're only looking um, just at, again, uh, a simple uh, linear case, no refinement. Um, but uh, again, we have um, checked that the, the output from this uh, simulation matches with, with MFEM. Uh, and again, here, here we can see we're, we're using uh, non-homogeneous boundary conditions uh, just to have something a bit more interesting to look at. Um, so that's, that's fully implemented and working. Um, we're currently working on uh, a Navier-Stokes implementation. Um, we've chosen a simple channel flow test case um, as our initial implementation. Um, and we're also using um, Corian scheme uh, with the three-step um, velocity, um, tentative velocity solve, um, pressure correction, and then velocity correction. Um, so that's not fully up and running yet, um, but we have implemented um, the, the initial velocity guess uh, and the corrected pressure velocity. Um, and even though that's not giving particularly good physical um, results and diverges quite quickly, we, we are um, making sure that we're, we're getting the same non-physical results um, by taking a Moose implementation and, and just breaking that down step by step as well. So uh, that should be complete soon. Um, so moving on to uh, the, the challenges we've, we've faced. Um, so with these fairly simple, um, fairly quick uh, examples that we've done so far, um, we've just been focusing on getting the implementation up and running, and we haven't done anything about the um, data partitioning. So um, Amrex is using its data partitioning in boxes, where each box may or may not be on a different process. 
um, and we're just letting Petsy do um, its own decomposition of, of the matrix. Uh, so they don't match at the minute. Um, so for the Poisson problem, um, at least without any refinement, that's not a particular issue. We only need it uh, when we do our file output to check the results. Um, when we've got a high level mesh, we need the results to uh, do our interpolation. Um, and for our time dependent problems, um, we need the results for, for the next time step where we're assembling um, within Amrex rather than in Petsy. Uh, so to work around that at the minute, um, what we're currently doing is once we've got the once we've done the solve in Petsy, um, we just do a scatter to all so that uh, we can get the results back into Amrex. That's, that's not ideal. Um, so we know we need to fix that. Um, so um, we're not sure what the best way to do it is, um, whether we need to sort of change uh, Amrex, Amre uh, the, the indexing scheme that we're currently using in Amrex, which is nice and very simple. Uh, or the way Petsy indexes, uh, look at um, DM method, some combination of all these, or some other options. So it'd be good to get um, some, some, some feedback on, on what the best way there would be. Um, even then, when we've got a good, uh, a, a better split, or we're still going to have an issue with um, uh, needing to, to deal with shared nodes uh, and making sure we can get the, the local data. Um, so we believe uh, vet create ghost is the way to go there but again would be good to uh, just get that confirmed um, so it's and just to mention this is mostly um, an issue for the Amrex side but also um, it's not ideal for, for Petsy as well where it has to move the uh, the data to, to the correct process um, when it's doing its assembly um, so yeah, so I talked about um, doing higher order uh, implementation and uh, multiple levels. Uh, what we haven't yet done is looked at doing uh, higher order together uh, with multiple levels. Um, so the reason that's a bit more challenging um, is because when we have this linear system, uh, we can quite easily say, well, this node sits above a node on the lower level, we can just zero it, that's no problem. Um, when we have higher order and multiple levels, it's a bit difficult to say uh, sort of this face mode sits above another face mode, that doesn't really work. Um, so the way you have to do that um, in order to, to make sure that you're not sort of, because we're looking at the differences between the, the base and the, the higher level solutions, um, you need to, to go back to the base level solution once you've done your solve and found where you need to refine uh, and um, effectively linearize your uh, elements that sit underneath a higher level one um, so you don't have a conflict between the different levels um, and yeah, zero out the, the higher order modes uh, and then rerun your assembly and solve um, so that's going to have some performance penal, uh, penalty there and, and maybe um, reduce the advantage that the uh, structured grid has over the unstructured grid. Um, but that's fine, that's not a major issue. The, the bigger difficulty is that it makes it harder to um, look at moving the data between the different levels. Um, if you're doing your interpolation from your lower level and um, yeah, sort of the other way as well, going from the higher level to the, to the lower level. Um, so uh, one other thing we haven't really looked at much yet, um, thus far everything I've been, I've shown has uh, been on a CPU. Um, we want uh, this framework to be um, portable. Um, Amrex has its own way of dealing with GPUs. Um, so I. Ideally, we should be able to use um, this to run run on GPU, but um, at the minute we have Amrex, Petsy, uh, Hyper, and Eigen all together, um, and getting them all compiled and set up and running on a GPU um, hasn't proven 
incredibly straightforward as yet. Um, and even if we get it running, uh, we also need to make sure that we uh, have good performance. Um, so uh, next steps, um, we've got a lot of different examples. Um, we've implemented them quite quickly. Uh, and a lot of it's quite hard coded. Uh, so we need to sort of go back and look at it then. Um, once we've got our Navier Stokes implementation, we need to look at um, this uh, Blob 2D fusion test case, um, which is one of the things that the UKA is really interested in. Um, that involves uh, solving for the electron de density pressure, vorticity, and con convection length. Uh, so, as a summary, um, we think we've, we've got a good proof of concept uh, for the sort of first working C++ FEM in implementation in AMREX. Uh, we're working towards uh, a real use case with fusion applications. Uh, we think this uh, dynamic multi-level with superpositioning refinement um, is something that matches quite well with the way AMREX works. Um, and this is something that we are expecting to open source, uh, but once we've done the, the code restructuring. So uh, that's my talk. Thank you very much, Alex. So you asked some questions about sort of the, the right way to do things between using IS or DM to map uh, your data structures to the way that Petsy tries to think about things. And I'm not sure we exactly have the correct answers, right. but I'm pretty sure we at least have experience. So some people can recognize that I'm wrong, but I think that one of the other box structure packages has implemented its own VEC type. Was it Chombo or was it one of the other? Samurai? So, um, we have examples of code where people have taken um, hierarchical nested uh, block structured AMR and instead of trying to directly map it to Petsy degrees of freedom, they just wrap a VEC type around what they're doing. Right. And we can at the very least point you to that and see if maybe if that's helpful for what you're trying to do. Um, other questions out there? All right, if not, let's thank Alex again. Good.